It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our show today is about adult daycare, and joining me is Bob Weber, who is the president and founder of The Social, and The Social is an adult daycare, and I'm very pleased to be able to talk to you all about it today. Welcome, Bob. How are you doing, Joe? How are you? I, I'm doing great. I'm That's doing great. Good. Now you can, we can put our hands up on the table, yep. we can relax, Okay. and we can talk about this fantastic, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say fantastic, folks, because I have personally helped start three adult daycares. I know what's involved. I know what I would like to refer to as the perils of Pauline in doing this kind of work. It's not easy. And it takes special people to even think about doing an adult daycare. And I think you'll see when Bob and I talk today exactly why I make that comment. And before I even ask you a question, what is your reaction to my work word and comment about being taking special people? Not just you, but your staff too, Bob. We, we, we are a special group and we love to take on um, all the seniors because it's like family. Right. It is. And you have to accept them like family. And I was raised in a medical f family, nurses, and we used to visit my mother when she was in a nursing home. And that always um, instilled a lot of uh, ideas on what to do in the future if I was ever going to stay in the medical field. And I branched out and I went into IT and then I came back into the medical field and decided to do something different when I opened up the adult daycare. And I first opened up home health agency. Okay. Home okay. health agency. And I went from that to an adult daycare. So um, the economy was rough for a lot of people, and as a home health agency, it was more one-on-one -on -one care at, at their home. It moved to um, families taking back their seniors and trying to be their family caregiver, which was creating a lot of stress in the family because of economic times. So that's what uh, instilled me to open up the adult daycare. care. And as you saw, it's not your typical adult daycare. No, we're going to talk about that, but I'll go back and let's move back back in time a little okay. bit. And you made a comment about um, families taking care of their own. When I was raised, when I was a young boy, I don't even remember adult daycares. I don't even know if they existed. Uh, I, I didn't know too much about Alzheimer's. I didn't know too much about the care industry. But almost every small town in the United States had what we lovingly referred to in those days as an insane asylum. I know. And you know that. I do. But I, as I go back now, I think that a lot of the people that were in these so-called insane asylums are the type of people that you will have in the social club. They were just people with dementia and Alzheimer's. They, yes. You know, you do have the extreme ones, the advanced stages, and you have the early stages. But um, I think I agree with you that they were the insane asylum We just put them away over there, yeah. forgot about them. And we didn't need to do that. Point is, Bob, we know more today than we did 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yes, yeah. and, and also the economy forces people to go to work and not stay home to care with the the, the, with the family. Yeah. So you have that so, financial burden. But question then becomes, what do I do with mother or father, or mother or dad, if I have to go back to work? I can't leave them alone many right. times. Some you can leave alone, but many you can't leave alone. So if you put them in an assisted living facility, the average cost of an assisted living facility today is roughly 
five, six thousand dollars a month. Yes. The poor places are cheaper. Yes. But if you want a good place for your mother and father, you're going to pay three, four thousand, five thousand dollars a month. Absolutely. So I think with all the talk about the Affordable Care Act and all the stuff that we're going through today, how about you telling our viewers what you're doing at the social club to drive down that cost element and how your version of the social club, the adult daycare, fits into the total care equation going from home care all the way up to nursing home. Our adult daycare is a facility that is like a home, as you saw it. Um, we have several different sections in a, the 5,000 square foot facility. We have a cafe and a social media area. And we have all the laptops. We'll help them communicate with their family members using any social media application that you know they are used to, like Facebook. Um, we also have a bar that they can sit down and be comfortable like they're at a restaurant. We have a lounge where they can sit and watch television. We have four televisions. One of the big television is a 65 inch where we can do presentations and movies. We have activities, billiards, air hockey, shuffleboard. We have a huge dining facility that also is our arts and craft area. We have a, a kitchen. We have three quiet rooms where if the noise is too much, they can go into the quiet rooms and watch television, read a book, listen to music. It's closed off. Um, we have all this we bring home and we don't have it so tightly structured where you have to go from room to room to room. If you wanna stay in a room, you'll stay in a room. A lot of the clients or participants that come, that are coming already, the caregivers are asking questions. Are they allowed to do this? Are they allowed to sit and watch television? Can they do that? They're asking so many different questions and I just tell them they're allowed to do whatever they want to do. It's treat it like their home. If they want to go in the living room and sit down, they can go. But it's a protective facility. They can't get out of they there. They can't get out. Um, we have all the doors alarmed, so they, they can't get out. People can come in, but they can't get out. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. Until I know. I know. Right. But that's important because I've been asked over the years to help uh, open adult daycares. And one of the first questions I ask is, uh, what kind of offense do you have around it? I, I, I remember there was a, a daycare was going to put, and he actually were planning on putting an 18 inch high wire embedded in a ground fence up and call out their safety zone. I said, you can't do that. No. You, that, that's, that's not possible. You don't no. do things like that. Correct, correct. What we're going to be doing, uh, and the construction is going to start soon, is an outside patio. But what we're going to have is, through one of the doors, a six foot fence, and it goes right into a patio, so everyone's protected, and it's gonna be a full umbrella. It's, it's right where you were parked. You know those two slots, yeah, right? Yeah. It, that's that, I'm converting that whole area to one huge patio, so they can go in and out without any worry. Yeah, folks, I want you to pay particular attention to what Bob is describing here, because I've seen all types of daycares. And I remember when we built our first adult daycare, we put a fish pond in. Mm. And we realized while a fish pond was a great idea, it was a real killer for taking care of. Yes. Too hard. It is. Right. What they needed was something that was a shaded area where they could get fresh air. Right. Because if they're at home, their family members are just not going to go out and wander around, so they don't get that fresh air into their lungs. This is one of the reasons why adult daycares are not only good from a safety aspect, but from a health aspect. It's very health conscious. What, what happens a lot is the family caregiver or um, a nurse, whoever is, you know, might be hired to take care of the, the participant or the client is they, they fall into a routine. We have one um, couple that just 
joined and she was explaining that her husband likes to get up, get out of bed, go to his living room chair, sit down for eight hours and watch his routine shows. And she just allows him to do that. She doesn't want him to, but it's a routine. We're not doing that. So now he's come in for the last four days and he's loving it. He's getting involved. He's doing shuffleboard. He's doing air hockey. He can hardly get around on his walker, but he's playing air hockey and he's doing it. And he's, he was even doing exercises yesterday. So well, one of the reasons that you're doing that is because so many people as we age are not challenged. Mm. If, if you're just allowed to exist, that's what you'll do. Right. But, uh, you know, some mornings, I'll admit, for me, mornings are the worst part of my day. I just feel like heck when I get up in the morning and I do go out, my wife has a cup of coffee for me, and I go out and I have a vibrator in, in my chair in the den. <laughs> And I sit in on that vibrator. There it goes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for 20 minutes. Got and you it, going. And it gets me started. It gets the blood circulating. Right. I drink my coffee and I take my blood pressure and I, I take my medicine. And then I'm, I'm, I'm good to go for the rest of the day. As long as I don't collapse or don't do something else. Right. Stupid. But right. the point here is, I think you should also tell our viewers when you take people into your into your daycare, you have an assessment form, you evaluate these people, oh, yeah. you, you go over their medicine charts. What is some of the routine things you do at the social club to ensure the safe transfer of that patient from the home environment to the daycare environment? We have a um, about a 20 page, not really detailed, but it just goes through assist, uh, an assessment of the, the participant that's gonna join, their needs, their medication. We have nurses on staff. And Pat, who is the nurse, she goes through the assessment and she'll do what is called like an, an intake. Right. Okay. And she'll go through all, all of the issues with the caregiver and, and the participant, make sure, making sure their doses of medication, their schedule is set, um, any allergies, physical impairments, their needs. And it's a big detailed list. We make sure everything is covered. And throughout the day, once they sign up, we assess them throughout throughout That's their important. stay. And we let the caregivers or the families know if there was any changes in their habits, diets, eating, anything. We, we document it and we keep a record of that with, with, their, with their history and we give it to the caregiver to either follow up with the doctor or we would follow up with the doctor, whatever is Do you needed. get a release sign that comes when, when, a, when a person comes in? And this is a question mostly for my own information. It's just something I don't know if we do it. It's something I think might be a good idea. Do you get a release from a family that enables you to call the doctor or 911? Yes, case? yes, okay. yeah. We, it's, we don't have a power of attorney, but we, we have like a release and we, we find out who their uh, uh, primary care physician is, um, a any other physicians they want us to know about that we need to be in contact because God forbid if there is a fall, and we need to contact someone, we, we bypass them and we go straight to their doctor or whomever needs to be called first. So okay. we work that with the caregiver or the family members. They understand safety aspect first. Safety first. Okay. Yeah. Now let's say, let's say that uh, the other element that's not really, you mentioned, well, two things. You mentioned a degree of difficulty in getting, some time, getting people to accept change. Yes. But the other part of that equation is that if a person comes to the adult day health care that is the medical adult day care time, which is set you, again, apart from a sort of a straight daycare, you have the nurses on call. So they're able to watch behavioral changes, yes. medical changes, and you're watching from the time they get there. And you're, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, your first client can come at six and they can stay till six at night. Yes. What was frustrating me, and I've spied on some other adult daycares, and a lot of them were convenience, almost 
banking hours, seven in the morning, eight in the morning to five o'clock at night, maybe six. Some would charge $20 if you were 15 minutes late. Every 15 minutes you were late, it was another $20. We're not charging. We're, I'm not gonna do that. I'm How not gonna they do that. I think what they're doing is trying to force the people to be there on time. And shame on you if you're not, but circumstances come up. And That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not going to do that. And in the future, depending on the community and their needs, I'm, I'm going to open up until 10, which gives the family the opportunity to come home from work, drop the senior off or whoever needs the care, and go out to dinner without being rushed through a dinner. So it just allows them, so you can just, you don't have to sign up for 80 hours a week, 40 hours, you can just drop off and go to dinner. We're just that easy. Let me ask you, all right, let's say if somebody, what would it, would it maybe drop somebody off at six o'clock at night and picking them up at nine or 10? Yes. What would you charge for something like that? It's the same rate. So my, my rates are, that would be $8 if it's, it's $8 an hour for four hours. Most of the places are charging $10 an hour. My, my hourly, if you just did a walk in and say, can I, can I drop Bob off for an hour? That would be $8.75. But if it's, if, it's over, if it's up to eight hours or more, it's seven fifty. dollars That's cheaper than a, ch a children's day, uh, a babysitter. I, it might be. I, I don't know. <laughs> you, I, I, I know. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know okay. for a fact. It's yeah, cheaper than a babysitter. Times are tough, and I don't have to take all their money. I just need to pay the food and the staff. Well, this is something that uh, at times, Bob, people have a uh, an incorrect impression of what service costs really are. They forget that you have registered nurses on staff. Right. They forget that they're being fed a balanced nutritional meal. By the way, where do you get your meals? I have meals coming in right now. I've signed up for um, Aging Matters, which is Meals on Wheels. Yes. And they'll be coming every day. But I also are going to be using the local cuisines like Carabas, Mima's, um, all the local restaurants. I've worked up plans with them. And... Once we have a full staff, I'm going to be checking to find out, um, excuse me, no. sorry, um, talk when, about restaurants. we were talking about the restaurants, when, when they'll be coming in for, for their different meals. So Meals on Wheels will be the, the, um, the regular delivery and the other restaurants will be those special deliveries. You know what? I found in 20 years of experience working with daycares when we were open on a Saturday, you know what the residents really liked? What was that? A bag lunch from McDonald's. <laughs> well, it was different. They, they just liked that McDonald's hamburger and those old limpy French fries. Yes. And, and a Coke. It was a treat. They didn't get that at home. They didn't take them out to McDonald's. But the people loved it. My wife had a cousin that she would, she would almost have died for a hamburger from McDonald's. You know, it's not the best thing in the world for you. I'm not knocking McDonald's at all. It's fast food. Right. But you know, when you get to be a certain age in life, the objective is to be happy as well as safe, as well as eating nutritional meals. But you know, how long do we really want to live? Well, some people don't want to live as long as others. I know. <laughs> but right. by government standards, you have to serve decent and nutritious, healthy meals. So me throwing a McDonald's probably wouldn't... It wouldn't be. You get a double Mac. <laughs> you get a double Mac. A double Big Mac. That'll do it. That'll do it because it has the lettuce and tomato on it, right? I think a nutritionist would beat you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that would uh, pass, but you're checking. I'm gonna check into it because I I happen to like. Okay, I, so do I, and I like their fries too. But um, I don't know. But we're go, we're gonna Meals on Wheels does uh, do hamburgers and stuff like that. Oh, I know they do. Oh yeah, and their meals are pretty good. I was there and I checked out their facility, so it's it's a really they good do kitchen. that they do that quarter leg thing that the chicken 
Yes. I happen to like the breast. I don't like the dark meat, so I was always in trouble. I don't like the dark meat on chicken. Anyway, the point here is, Bob, yes. is that you are going to do the very best you can to operate a facility that will con cater to the needs and desires and safety of the client. Yes, the, the biggest thing is not only are, are we different versus the other daycares in, in the format and the layout, we have the medication management. We have the ability to, if you have an oxygen tank and you're worried about it running low, don't. If you're worried about them roaming, um, don't. We, it's all, everything's alarmed. Um, we have staff that are in every area. No one will be alone. They can't sneak away. It's very friendly. Everyone, everyone, including yourself, was very impressed of the layout and the design of the facility. I didn't tell you something else I did when I came down to your facility. One of the first things I did when I walked through the through the front door was I looked at the layout of your of your new flooring that you had in there, and as I walked, I skidded my feet along the floor to see if it was slippery. Slippery. It was not. It's not. I know. I know. That's one of the first things I checked. I never even said a word to you because I I realized that. If a daycare facility owner is thinking in terms of, of non-skid and the type of wax everything you use on a deck, which they should, they, yes. this it was, would provide the basic safety feature. I looked at your doors, I looked in your bathroom, and I saw that in the one you have the uh, shower accessible, uh, or the wheelchair accessible shower. It's wheelchair accessible. Right. It's a huge bathroom, right. isn't now, it? Now, will you, will you give yes. showers there? Yes, the showers are there for the reason. If, if, if families need the participant to have a shower, we'll, we'll handle that. If there's accidents, we'll take care of that. There will be. There, there will, will be. be. Yeah. There will and be. And you have a washer and dryer there to, to yes. do the laundry. Yes. Do you keep, do you, I didn't notice, do you have a, uh, a section where you can keep an extra change of clothes for them? We do. In, in where the nurse ad administrator's office, yeah. there's a whole wall of cubby holes and containers for their clothes. I miss that. Yes. I miss that. Yeah. But that's extremely important. Now, if a person, if you, uh, since you have the capability to do uh, wheelchair showers, is there an extra charge to do a wheelchair shower? Not really. If I think what we're doing is $5, which covers, depends, towels, everything, if, if they didn't bring anything in, and the shower. It's all included, pretty much. It's fantastic. It's just the expense. So if we need to use up some of our supplies, we ask, you know, to help pay for the, the reimbursement to restock. And that's restock. extremely fair. Yeah, I, that's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know what the state expects. The rate. I know that the state. Your cost is up for eight dollars and seventy-five cents an hour. Yes. The state reimburses at the rate of ten dollars and fifty cents. Did you know that? N the state will reimburse when they have the Alzheimer's disease initiative program. They reimburse at a higher rate than you're charging. Okay. So it tells me that yours is a very fair rate. We try to be a fair rate. Well, it is. Yeah, it is. And yeah, the, the and all the Medi Medicaid. Um, I think for the state of Florida, Medicaid, now you're not talking about Medicaid, right? I'm talking about Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. disease initiative money. They have a separate way of uh, figuring cost per hour. Okay. And it's a very complicated, stupid process. Mm -hmm. I, I went through it for 20 years. I can't tell you how inflexible some of the yeah. state requirements are for administering respite programs, daycare programs, and overall medical care. And the legislature, as we do this show today, is arguing the value and the merits of how we're gonna administer Medicaid in the future. Mm. You have already recognized with the establishment of your daycare that you have to do something to get into this sliding scale we have from home care to nursing home care. We have to put elements of care in place that take care of the people, keep them safe, and that's what you're doing there. What else, 
sets the social apart above from what we've talked about. I'm going to start a glance what you're talking about. That's okay. Sure think, figure out anything here. The, um, I'll, without saying names, one of the adult daycares I was at was f large, but most of the activities was done in one room. And it was a square room, and everyone was sitting around a table, and I walked in during a, a church service. I think it was Baptist at the time. The reason I'm saying that is because it was just finishing up. And I was talking to the administrator, and after that service finished, a Catholic service came in, and everyone has to participate in both services. We, they're just trapped in that one room. That's not, that's not and, good. No, right. So they had that one room. It's their community room. Then they had the next section, which was a kitchen, and then the next section were, was offices. So even though it was large, the space for the participants was small. Okay, we're almost out of time. Okay. Where are you located? Our location is on Babcock, just south of Palm Bay Road and Port Malabar Road. It's the big black building, the marble building, where MEMA and Health First was in. Phone number. 321-373-7000. 373 It's really okay. easy. I want to thank you, folks, for watching today's episode. And we'll have Bob back to talk about more. We'll give him a chance to let this thing start working, and we'll come back and we'll say how, what he's going to change and make it even better. Fair deal? Sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Good show. Good show. Buddy. All right. Thanks, okay. Joe. This is Joe Steckler. I am broadcasting from radio station WML 1300 AM, where you can hear our Helping Seniors program on the radio every Thursday at 1 p.m. The work we do at Helping Seniors is important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our media sponsors, such as AM 1300 WML here in Brevard County, are so important. I'd also like to thank other media partners at Senior Scene Magazine, where you'll see our Helping Seniors newsletter as a center pullout feature in each month's edition. You'll also see an article each month in Hometown News, a weekly local paper. And I'd also like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses, and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of both our outbound information programs such as this, as well as our inbound information efforts by calling our senior information line at 321-473-7770. There, they will get help and direction that could be helpful for their specific situation or circumstances through information, education, and access to resources. Lastly, I'd like to thank all viewers, listeners, and readers who take an action step and help as individuals to support the mission of helping seniors. It's quite easy, actually, to join them. You can call us at 321-473-7770 to get involved as a partner with Helping Seniors, and or you can also donate directly on our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference. 